Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, I will concentrate on the discussion on conducted immunity. Okay, so under this conducted immunity test and measurement, we can perform this CI through CDN. Okay, which means that we actually utilize this coupling decoupling network in order to do this conducted immunity. Or we can Im so called implement another method, which is through the cram, which is also known as capacitive coupling cram. Okay, so this video, I'm going to highlight the key difference between these two methods, the advantages and disadvantage when we actually do these two methods to perform the conducted immunity test. This will be the part 67 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist okay, under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion of EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and also turn on your notification bell. Okay, I also like to urge you guys, if any expert seeing this video, if you can contribute to this topic, conducted immunity, okay, please help okay, through your comment okay, so that we can learn as a whole in the community. Okay, so once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let's start okay, by defining what is actually conducted immunity. Okay, a conducted immunity test measures actually a device ability to withstand disturbance that travel along power lines or signal cable. Okay, so basically, what is a conducted immunity is we have this TUT. Okay, so we want to test whether the TUT can still function when noise source is actually insert, for example, for this case, is through the CDN. Okay, so basically, this is what it means here. Okay, so this disturbance can lead to malfunction, performance degradation, or even complete failure. So the key purpose when we actually do this conducted immunity test is to ensure that the device remains unaffected by such disturbance and maintain its performance. This test evaluate the potential impact of electromagnetic interference on the device functionality. The results are ensure that the product is reliable and also for certification purpose. Basically, in short, you can see over here, this is where we so-called generate our noise source. So basically, this is what we call control noise. This is where is our EUT. Okay, so basically, this is CDM method. So basically, we inject a noise through one of the port of CDM and basically you can see that this is actually the power source so this is actually directly connected to the power source to the DUT and you can see that the noise source actually will propagate in this direction and therefore we will see whether our EUT can still function as per normal or not so basically this is a very simple concept of conducted immunity okay I will explain more on the test and measurement on conductor immunity on my next video. Okay, but this gives you some fundamental, or maybe I should say that the key idea is to explain the two way of doing this conductor immunity. The level of interference that actually travel down these lines actually varies based on the associate E field or H field to which the equipment is exposed. For example, it can be so-called interference can be three volt per meter or 10 volt per meter. So basically based on the different test standard. Okay, so basically you control your noise source and you deliver the noise source to the DUT and you quickly want to see whether your EUT can still function as per normal. Or so when we actually test the immunity to conduct RF noise or interference, okay, we have several injection and also test method okay, which we can be employed. Okay, the most common method as shown in the figure below is using the CDN which I have briefly explained just now. CDN actually stands for coupling decoupling network. Okay, so this is one method. Another method is through the cram, okay, which means that we actually inject the EFT pulse onto the data line. Okay, most of the time will be data line rather than power line through the capacitive coupling cram. 
Okay, so later on, again, I will explain what is actually a capacitive coupling cramp. But like I mentioned, I will highlight the two key difference between these two methods of testing. Testing with a CDN or capacitive coupling cramp are both techniques used in EMC testing to inject signal into or couple signal with the EUT. However, this method differs significantly in their application in terms of the functionality and also the typical use case. For example, the first figure here shows through the CDN. The second method is through the capacitive coupling cramp. So basically, this is a CDN. You can see that there are actually two power source. One source is to power up the CDN itself. The second source is basically to power up your EUT. So basically, you can see that this is actually where we actually power our EUT. And from here, we can actually set the noise source that will be injected into your EUT power. And we actually do this to ensure that the EM wave actually propagate in certain direction only. And therefore, when the EUT actually receive the disturbance, we see whether it can be still function or not. So basically, this is by the CDM method. Another method is through the cramp. Okay, so basically, this is what we call the cramp. We actually cramp our cable. For example, this is a data signal, for example, over here. So what we actually do is basically, again, we need to do a calibration. Okay, so we need to do a calibration first before we can do this. Okay, I will discuss a little bit more when we actually go into specific test case here. Let's say over here, I actually do this calibration. Okay, so for example, I have certain RF value. This RF value inject onto the cramp and the cramp actually do a capacitive coupling, okay, which means that it's not direct contact with the cable line. They actually couple the noise onto the cable line and the noise actually will propagate in this direction all the way to the EUT and we see whether the EUT can still function or not. So basically you can see that there are actually two key distinct. The first method which is using the CDN, which means that I actually inject the noise directly onto the cable and then they actually propagate into towards the direction of your EUT. Another method that I actually do is basically through the capacitive coupling. When I actually do the capacitive coupling, okay, which means that I do not have direct contact to the cable, the signal, the disturbance actually will be propagated towards your EUT. And again, based on that, I will see whether my EUT can still function or not. So basically, these are the two methods. So let's kick start the discussion okay, by uh, by using this CI via CDN. Okay, so as I mentioned, CDN actually means conduct coupling decoupling network. Okay, so the key purpose of CDN, they are actually used to inject conducted RF disturbance, okay, which is the common mode signal, into cables that is actually connect to the EUT while ensure that the unwanted signal are not back fit into the auxiliary equipment or the power source. Okay, so basically this is what I have illustrated. You can imagine that CDN actually insert in between your EUT and also your noise source. You can see that the noise source is actually insert into one part of the CDN. Okay, and again from here you can see that it's actually direct contact to the power source that is actually supply the power to the EUT. And basically, the noise source will be following in one direction all the way towards your EUT. Okay, so basically, this is by the CDM method, which is illustrated over here. So the key application is to do this conducted immunity test via this standard IEC 61000-4-6. The coupling RF disturbance to the signal, data, or power line of the EUT. So basically, you can see that, in fact, it's a direct fit of the noise source. Isolate isolate equipment from the injected RS signal. Okay, so we need to ensure that, for example, for this case here, the noise source will not go back to our power supply. Okay, if not, it defeat the purpose. We need to ensure that the noise source will be moving into one direction, which is towards your UT, rather than towards our auxiliary support here. So basically, this is we need to ensure this. So this is the meaning here. The operation. The CDN is insert between the EUT and also the connected cables. Okay, it provides a control impedance and consistent injection point for the RF signal. The decoupling part ensures minimum disturbance to the rest of the test setup. So basically, you can see that CDN actually allow us to do the testing by isolate all the rest of the so-called auxiliary support 
so that we only purely test the disturbance towards the direction of EUT. So what is the advantage and disadvantage when we actually do this form of test using CDN? Okay, so the key advantage is basically the test will be very consistent and well-controlled signal injection because we do a direct. Okay, so basically the direct noise source will be controlled better because the noise source will be very consistent and basically we have a well-controlled noise source so as to determine the outcome. Okay, we actually reduce the variable in the test result okay, due to the envir environmental factors and also the cable configuration. Okay, it is easy to set up for certain standardized tests. Okay, so basically this will be the advantage when we actually do this conductor immunity via CDN. As for the limitation, okay, basically they are actually limited to system with specific cable types. For example, that actually match the CDN. Okay, for example, internet cable. Okay, we may not be able to inject directly to the internet cable or maybe coaxial cable or multiple core cables, which is not that clear, so-called straightforward. For CDM, for example, a power source, then we can easily inject the noise source to the CDM. However, for this kind of supply, okay, we, which may be a big challenge, it requires a physical interrupt of the cable to insert the CDN. As I mentioned, CDM actually insert in between the noise source and also your EUT. And basically, you need to break off the connection, then you can insert your CDN. With this, okay, it can be quite challenging, for example, for internet connection, etc. Okay, so before I continue, guys, okay, I, again, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by like this video. If you have learned something and if you are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and also turn on your notification bell. Okay, let's continue the discussion of conductor immunity via the coupling method here. Okay, so this is another method which is to use the cram. Okay, so this cram method is also known as capacitive coupling cram. The key purpose, okay, the capacitive coupling cram is actually used to inject RF signal into the EUT cable in a non-intrusive way, which means that we don't directly touch the cable. Typically for conductor immunity tests, you can imagine that the noise source will be coupled over to the cable itself. So you don't directly inject the RS signal, you actually use the coupling method to inject the noise source. The key application, okay, conductor immunity tests will be the same standard, okay, but they do it in another way, which is using the cram method. Use when in, actually insert a CDN will be impractical. For example, for shield cable or large setup, which is can be very challenging when we actually use a CDM, the cram method will be much more easier. You just need to cram okay, along the cable and the signal will be actually inject through the cable. So basically, it's a non-intrusive. You don't need to break the point to insert this cram method. Operation. The coupling cram is actually placed around the cable connected to the EUT. Like I mentioned earlier on, you don't need to break the joint. You just couple the noise source into the cable. Okay, it capacitively couples RF disturbance into the cable without direct electrical contact. They works by creating a capacity between the cram and also the cable, are allowing RF energy to couple inductively. Okay, so basically, I have also discussed how EM wave can be coupled also. So basically this way, we actually couple the noise source onto the cable. Next, okay, let's quickly go through the advantage and also the limitation when we actually do this conductor immunity via the cram. Okay, so the key advantage is this is non-intrusive. Okay, we don't need to disconnect or interrupt the cable. The noise source just couple over. So this will be very useful for setup with non-standard cable configuration or when CDN cannot be used. It is definitely more flexible and can handle larger cable diameter uh, or multiple cables. As for the limitation, okay, so then it will be less precise because it's not a direct contact as compared to CDM. Okay, so therefore, we are going to have some form of variability in coupling efficiency. It actually depends on the cable shield length and the geometry. Okay, the coupling efficiency may need to be calibrated for each test setup to ensure compliance with standard. Okay, so basically, when you actually want to do this cram, okay, you need to do some calibration. 
so that the amount of energy that is actually coupled over to the cable will be remain the same. So therefore, this can be quite constrained. You need to do a calibration before you actually can perform this conducted immunity using the VR method. Okay, let's come to the last slide for today's video. Okay, summary of the key difference. Okay, so basically you can see that I'm going to do a comparison between CDM and capacitive coupling clamp. Okay, for CDM, it's direct. Okay, so therefore when we actually derive direct, okay, we can also define our impedance. So this will be more accurate. Okay, as for capacitive, it's actually using the capacitive coupling. Okay, which means that under the E field coupling over. Okay, as for cable handling, okay, we require to so-called break the joint and then we need to insert it between them and then we can do it for the CDM method. But for capacitive coupling, okay, so basically they are not intrusive, okay, which means that you don't need to break the joint, you just need to couple over the energy. The disturbance can actually surround the cable and couple over. Precision, okay, so the for using this CDM, the precision is very high, okay, because it's a direct contact. So basically we ensure that everything actually will be inject into the power source, for example. So basically we will have a consistent coupling. For this method using the cram, okay, the the accuracy is moderate, okay, because there will be variable coupling. You know that when uh so called if you couple, they actually vary with frequency. And therefore, because of this, we have some form of moderate accuracy to achieve that. Application scope, okay, so basically it will be a standardized cable. Okay, so for example, internet, we also have some form of uh standardized uh CDN also. Okay, as for capacitive, it will be flexible okay, for various cable setup. Setup complexity, okay, this actually requires specific CDN for cable. This method is actually very simple and it can actually apply to most of the cable. In fact, all the cable with different diameter, etc., it can be still applied. So common usage is basically all the standardized test environment. For example, power source, etc it will be very easy to test using this cdn okay so for capacitive coupling okay, it will be mainly used for non-standard or you require some form of flexibility then you will use this okay so in short i like to highlight the key difference between these two in summary okay, cdn are actually preferred for control precision application with standard cable while capacitive coupling clamp are actually ideal for non-invasive testing particularly for non-standard or shield cable. In short, over here, you can see that if we can test under CDN, then we need to use CDN to test the conductor immunity. If we cannot test under CDN, then we don't mind to switch to coupling method, which is through the cramp. Okay, so this method, maybe it's not that desired because you lack of the precision. However, because you need to test with different cable, for example, then you have no choice but to fall back on the cramp method. Okay, so basically, over here, I have highlighted the key difference of performing conductor immunity through the CDN or the capacitive coupling cramp. You can see that most of the time, you are able to do the task. If you can do it all at CDN, then you will do at CDN. If not, then you will be falling back using this cramp method to do the conducted immunity. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for song support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.